Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, Sega Racing Renaissance, where we review every single arcade release Sega racing game in 3D in a retrospective fashion. And today we have Le Mans 24, a super slept on and mostly forgotten about, in my opinion, arcade racing game for the Sega Model 3. It is more of a simulation than it is an arcade style handling game, but it is still an incredible game. It was still released in arcades and it was still 3D, so we gotta talk about it. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Now right off the top, this is not the same game as the Dreamcast Le Mans 24 that was made by a different company. It just happens to have the same theming. You might see a little glitch there, that's because I am forcing this game into widescreen on the Supermodel emulator. And if you don't know what Le Mans 24 is, it's the 24 hour of Le Mans, and it is a 24 hour race. Now I'm not the biggest into racing, I do love watching some top year and grand tour, but I do not watch racing on television. But I do love Le Mans 24. To get good at this game though, you need to readjust your expectations of what a Sega arcade racing game is. Because this is not a full simulation, but the handling and the physics are much more realistic to the real world than they are to an arcade racing game. And honestly, you can just drive over that dirt and cut that corner off. But you're going to see here right at the top, this is going to be a very lightly edited video because you are actually racing in the 24 hours of Le Mans. 10 minutes takes about 24 hours. I kind of wish there was a mode in the arcade board that gave you an actual 24 hours and I would love to see somebody modify the ROM to do that because it would be one hell of a speed run to see what place you got. I could see somebody streaming it on Twitch as some sort of charity marathon. But this is just a totally fun game. And I love that the fact that it takes place over 24 hours, you get so many different conditions. You start at sunset, you race into the night, and you start getting headlights, and you get that realistic lighting effect because Model 3 was capable of certain things like that. You'll see I'm not doing the best job at racing, I will finish, but if you do run out of time, you just put in another credit to continue. You don't need to do this perfectly to see the ending, you need to do it perfectly to see the ending in first place. It's just one track. This game has a second track and you can race the 24 hours of Le Mans as a lap sort of situation, just three laps and you're done, but this game doesn't have longevity. It only has longevity in the fact that you're going to need to learn how to play, you're going to need to memorize this course to perfection just to be able to get a win out of it. It's the type of thing that you might sit down at for three hours and just continually run over and over and over again to get ever so slightly better in that pursuit of understanding how to get that first place. And you will see that some cars just completely break down and catch on fire, not unlike the real race where cars break down all the time. But it's just a fun game. It's a very small game, and I think that's why it's been mostly forgotten about compared to something like, you know, Daytona 2 on the Model 3, or even, of course, Scud Race. Those are still talked about games to this day. Le Mans 24, or Le Mans, I'm not sure my pronunciation could be off, is a smaller game that people seem to have forgotten about. But I can assure you, if you like Sega arcade racing games or arcade racing games in general, and you've never given this game a shot before, you are missing out. Because if you like to practice at games, if you like to get better, learn every intricacy, and improve your performance, this game, unlike any of the other Sega arcade racing games to this point in the series, is going to offer you that ability to learn and master things in ways that no other game from Sega had done before. And that's why I keep coming back to it time and time again to try to get that first place finish because it's been a few years since I've been able to do so. But you definitely want a wheel and pedal set for this, it's so much better than using an analog controller. But it also has a really fun and soothing soundtrack because you're going to be playing this game for a while to see the finish. So go ahead and listen for like 35-45 seconds and I'll be right back. Enjoy! Time up. 
Now you see what happens if you run out of time, you just hit continue and you keep going. But let's leave the 24 hour Le Mans for a moment and go over to the second course in the game and I chose automatic just because of my current desk setup, I can't find a place to mount a shifter. But it is nice that they gave you a second track in the game just to see something different than that one course. Maybe they could have given us one more so you had three courses and I think it would have been fun and I don't know if the Le Mans license allowed it because this is a licensed game. If you could do a 24 hour circuit on this course as well because this is just going to be a one out of three lap race and you're going to try to get first place on it but i just love how different the cars are this mobile one car the porsche is wild the ass end of it wants to swing out and fishtail on you pretty much around every corner so you're definitely going to want to pick one car and get used to it because the handling and physics profiles on all of them are so wildly different that trying to just try out a new car is going to be an exercise in futility until you play this game like 15 20 times with it and really get a better understanding of how it functions because this game is probably the closest sim game that sega ever made i know world drivers championship is kind of advertised as more of a racing simulator but it has much more of an arcade feel than le mans 24 and Sega also had the Sega Touring Car Championship, which we've either already talked about or we'll talk about shortly. And that kind of hewed more towards this sort of style as well. But just racing around in this downtown era, it is so much fun to look at. This might not be the prettiest Model 3 game ever. It's actually, as far as the color scape's concerned, maybe one of my least favorite. But the racing mechanics are there, and they are good. And that's all that really matters when you're playing an arcade racing game, if it's got good mechanics. Now this was made by Sega Am through the same team that made Sega Rally Championship and this kind of feels like an answer to that game because Sega Rally was obviously an off-road racing game where drifting and handling those curves in all sorts of different handling environments was really important. This feels like the opposite. You're always on pavement but it keeps the same impetus on having to deal with cornering and sometimes moving back to Le Mans here 24 hours you get rain and the handling does change so it's never going to go to dirt unless you screw up and drive through the dirt you shouldn't do that but it is going to use that same sort of physics handling system to force you to learn how to drive the car in different ways even if it's the same vehicle because right now in the rain that road is slick and your handling changes completely you can see just by moving left and right the tail end of that ferrari just wants to slide out on us you need to be way more careful in the rain or else you're going to end up on the grass like i was there and that's the great thing about the 24 hour mode. You're gonna get basically every single physics handling system that you would have seen in Sega Rally. Dry pavement, wet pavement, snow, not snow in this instance, but it feels similar. All of those things are gonna be in the same game, except it's not a rally game. But I think the developers did a great job of reutilizing that concept for another game. And I'd love to know how these cars catch on fire. You just suddenly see them and they are burning, but they're still driving. I think by this point in time, I definitely would have pulled over and tried to get out of that car because uh, humans and fire don't really mix if they get too close. But I like that you even get the Michelin ad and Sonic in the background. At one point in this lap, you're going to see a gigantic Michelin man in the background. There's not a ton to look at because that's not what's important. The car graphics look good, the polygons look good, but the most important thing is just looking at your racing line. But you'll see here we're getting really close to the 24 hour mark and we're in ninth position. You don't end in a lap, once you hit 24 hours the race just stops and wherever you are, that's where you're going to finish up. And you'll see I had to take one more continue, it only took me two credits to see the end of Le Mans 24. And if you see this game in arcades, 100% play it, because I have not seen a cabinet for it in probably 20 years now. It may have still been the late 90s the last time I saw it. You'll see, Le Mans 24 is complete and we got a D. We didn't do that good of a job, but you do get women in 3D polygons from Model 3 that they were trying to make look attractive. I don't think they did a good job, but hey, that's the era of it. But you do get a race against the Golf Porsche, an iconic classic car. You get one hot lap to see if you can beat them. That's all it is. But it is just a ton of fun. I love just seeing that come out in that iconic shape. I gotta show it to you twice. But let's just jump into the lap. It's a fun way to end this game and it's kind of just a little bit of a bonus for you having completed the 24 hours. You get to race against one of the fastest vehicles ever made from this era. But that is Le Mans 24. It's definitely a forgotten about game and it's not one that you're going to hear too many people talk about. And honestly, if you look up a list of the top 10 best arcade racing games Sega's ever made, it's not going to appear on there. And that's probably just because there's only one thing to do, and that's drive as fast as you can for 24 quote-unquote hours 
or about 10 minutes in game time. But if you like practicing, if you like learning physics, if you like really getting as good as you possibly can at a video game, then I highly recommend you check this game out. I'm playing it on the Supermodel 3 emulator and I'm forcing widescreen. That's why you get those little black boxes in the top left and right hand corner. There is no sky box that can extend to 16 by 9 unfortunately, but it's not that big of a deal. But you're going to see here, the intensity of trying to get past this car is amazing. He had a bad shift, apparently, and I was able to squeak right past. And we are going to get the checkered flag on the bonus stage. But yeah, Le Mans 24, I definitely recommend you check it out. And if you like what you see, spend the time, practice it, get good at it. Because when you actually get first place, it's going to be one of the best racing accomplishments you can get in an arcade game. Short of that, leave me a comment down below. But I will see you guys for the next episode next Wednesday. Bye-bye.